I think the most important thing in IWAS is, before you see the IWAS, please imagine what you expect. Because this, is, this will help you in better understanding the IWAS. Now, this, my, my talk is based on these points, morphology of plaque. I think this is a, you have a separate lecture on that. Then comes the length of the lesion, the diameter of the uh, device to be taken, the plaque burden, the percentage stenosis, vessel remodeling, vessel tapering, spasm, branching points in carinal angle, and the myocardial bridge. These are the, all the points which we need to assess in the, when we do the IVAS. And the first and most important point is, what is an MLA? Before uh, identifying what is an MLA, we need to identify where is the intima lumen interface. Then only we, uh, we will be able to identify the MLA. And once you circle that interface, the uh, area uh, inside is the MLA. And what is the vessel area? The darkest po uh, the circle which we see in the IVAS is the media. And the outermost portion of the media is the EEM, that is the external elastic membra membrane. So the area occupied by the external elastic membrane is the vessel area. And once you subtract vessel area, uh, uh, MLA from the vessel area, you got the plug area. Plug is nothing but the intima measurement. Vessel area minus the, uh, the lumen area gives you the plug area. There's something called as plug burden. Plug burden is how much of the vessel area is the plug occupying. It can be easily measured. You subtract the lumen area from the vessel area, it gives you the plug. And once you divide it by the vessel area, it gives you a plug burden. Suppose in this case, if you see the vessel area, it was around 8.1 and the MLA was around 3.62. If you subtract the MLA from the vessel area, it gives you the plug. And once you divide it by the vessel area, it gives you the plug burden. But mind you, plug burden is not same as percentage stenosis. You may have a plug burden of 50-60%, but it doesn't mean that the stenosis is also the same. Because luminal percentage stenosis will depend upon what is, it is always in respect to the, what is the normal reference area. For example, you see the blood flow is, the determ is, is determined by the lumen area and not by the how much plug is present. For example, if you see in this case, the proximal, if you see, the plug burden is around 50%. But if you calculate the percentage stenosis, which can be calculated by the, uh, subtracting the lumen area from the lesion site from the normal segment and divided by the normal segment. So if you sub the, the uh, MLA at the normal segment was around C, around 11.18, MLA at the lesion site was 8.98, and if you calculate the percentage stenosis, it will come out to be around 25%. If you look at the plaque burden, it is 50% because there's something called as, uh, uh, positive remodeling. So in the case of positive remodeling, you can, uh, you can get a high plaque burden, but it doesn't mean that the percentage stenosis is same as the plaque burden. So can we uh, use these areas to identify whether we can uh, do an intervention or we can postpone the intervention? The answer is no. The MLA cutoff of 4 millimeter, which was previously used to have to rule out any intervention is, is not a good criteria. Though MLA, though the IVAS has a good correlation with FFR, it will depend upon the what is, what is the normal reference uh, vessel. For a vessel size of less than 3 millimeter, a 2.4 MLA usually has an FFR of less than 70%. For a vessel size between 3 to 3.5, an MLA of less than 2.75 has a good correlation of an FFR more than 70. Similarly, in a large vessel of 3.5, an MLA of less than 3.7, 3.6 has a good correlation of FFR more than 70. So the bottom line is, mere, uh, only one value is not sufficient. You have to correlate in context with the normal reference segment or the, norm, or the normal vessel size. Then only we can uh, correlate between the MLAs and the FFR and the physiological significance of that lesion. So the IVAS, can IVAS we use IVAS to decide whether to stand or, stand or not? An IVAS criteria of less than 4 millimeter cannot be used to stand or stand out. The only exception is the left main LMCA, where it is, if it is less than 6 millimeter square, we usually say it's not significant. It's significant. So MLAs are good to rule out, I can say, rather than rule in interventions. And MLAs should always be interpreted in contacts with the normal reference segment. 
Now coming to the next point, how do you, st uh, how do you decide which stand size to be taken? This is very important. I think it will depend that there are two options, either lumen based or 0.25 up or a vessel based or 0.25 less. How do you decide which is, which is the most appropriate? I think it will depend upon the plug button at the distance reference segment. If the plug button is more than 50%, then you have to take the lumen area and then 0.25 up. If the plug button is less, then take a vessel area or 0.25 less. Just for example, these are two examples. Here you can see the distal landing zone, the plug button is almost less than 50%, it's less than 10%. So here we'll take the vessel area and 0.25 less. So the vessel area was around, th vessel diameter was around 3.8, so you can take a 3.75 stand, it's okay. But on the right side you can see the plug button is more than 50%. Though the vessel area is around 3.5, but we cannot take a 3.5 stand. Then here we have to take the sizing depending upon the lumen area and then 0.25 up. So lumen area was around 2.4, so you can take a 2.75 stand in, the, in this category. So it all depends upon the plug button at the, at the reference distal landing zone. Plug button less, take the vessel area 0.25 less. Plug button more, take the lumen area 0.25 up. Skip this. What about how to measure the length of the lesion? Again, it's very simple. Mark the distal reference segment. Distal reference segment is the nearest normal segment. Just bookmark that segment. Mark the pro proximal reference segment. Again, which is the nearest proximally normal reference segment and just measure the distance between the two bookmarks, it will give you the exact length of the lesion and exact length of the size of the stent which, we need to be, which is need to be taken. For example, in this case, this was the distal landing zone, this was the proximal landing zone, I bookmarked this lesion, I bookmarked that segment, and the computer and the, the software automatically measure the difference, measure the length between the two bookmarks, this will give you the exact length of the stent which should be taken. Now, another important point in vessel analysis is vessel remodelings. Because vessels sometimes to accommodate the plug, vessel remodels and it increase in, the, it increase in size. This is what we, take, what we call as a positive remodelling. So if the vessel area at the lesion side is more than the vessel area at the normal reference segment, we call it as a positive remodelling. And when it is significant, if the difference, if the ratio of the vessel area divided by the, at the lesion side is divide by the vessel area at the reference side, if it is more than 1.1, that means it is significantly positively remodeled vessels. And this is very important to know whether the vessel is positively remodeled or not, because sometimes if we, if we, if we go on chasing the positive remodeled vessel to match the size of the vessel area, then it sometimes can be catastrophic. This is just to show how positively remodeled vessels look like, even with the same person in stenosis, vessel can be a positively remodeled vessel, this is a negatively remodeled vessel. So we must see the distal reference or proximal reference segment, what is the vessel area, and if it is more than that area, that means the vessel is positively remodeled. Just to show you the example again, here you can see the vessel area at the lesion site was around 18.8, .8. and if we see the normal reference, proximal reference segment, it was around 11.85. So the vessel area and the lesion side was more because the vessel is accommodating that plug, it is increasing the size. So if we divide this 11.8 uh, um, uh, divided by 8.9 is 1.4. So any value of more than 1.1 is a significantly positively remodeled vessel. There's also something called as vessel tapering. We know that vessels, once you, they taper as they go distally. This should also be kept in mind when we assess the size or once we assess the vessel, whenever there are branching points, the vessel decreases in size. And this tapering is much more in LLD, LED than circumflex or right coronary artery. For example, if you see this, the, 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 uh, if you know, note the diameter of the vessel in the very proximal segment before branching, it is around 4.9. The moment the vessel branches, the diameter reduces drastically. You can see after one branch is 4.1, another second branch, is around 3.4. And whenever there are no branching points between the two between the vessel, the vessel, the diameter doesn't change much. So mind you, whenever the, there's branching point, the vessel diameter reduces uh, significantly. So this is all this should also be kept in mind once we assess the vessel 
in the pre-PCI analysis. On an average, they say for every 10 millimeter length in LED, the vessel tapers by 0.3 millimeter. For circumflex in RC, it's around 0.15 for every 10 millimeter uh, the length. This is this is how the vessel tapering usually happens in normal scenarios. And also in vessel analysis, there's something called as myocardial bridge. And IVAS is a very good modality to pick myocardial bridge. And there's something called as half moon sign. Half moon sign is an echolucent area which is seen between the bridge segment and the epicardial tissue. And this persists throughout the cardiac cycle. And you can see, this is very beautifully see the half moon echolucent area uh, uh, which is seen. This is what, how IVAS, uh, in, you know, how myocardial bridge looks in the IVAS. Again, this is also very important because if the landing zone, if you see a myocardial bridge, if it stands, lands in the myocardial bridge, this is not uh, good for the long-term outcome. Dr. Minoria, we have uh, 30 seconds left. Okay, I'm done. To conclude. Uh, another important um, uh, feature in vessel analysis is you see the bifurcation angle. If you see a very hairy, spiky carina, that's what we call as the eyebrow sign. That means these vessels are the high chance of, this side branch has a high chance of vessel closure. Why it happens so, if it's the carina is very spiky, and once you implant the main vessel stand, it is going to push the carina to the side branch. So whenever we see on IVAS a hairy, spiky carina or a, or a uh, eyebrow sign, this is a predictor of side branch closure. This is, on, this is just to show how uh, unfavorable what our eyebrow sign on IVAS looks like. Also, sometimes vessels are in spas when you can, you can underestimate the size. So always it's better to give an NTG before doing IVAS to rule out any spas. All right, can we go to your uh, final slide? Okay, I thank you. We'll I think just to conclude, I think intracoronary imaging are the glasses of modern-day intervention cardiologists who do not like blind decisions. Thank you.